Hello and welcome back. I hope you're doing amazing on this wonderful day. Today we have yet another Python automation deck. Most Python tutorials that you see online will start off with, oh, let's code up a tic-tac-toe app. The thing with those programs is that while they might be good for learning, they're not that interesting. And as I always say in pretty much every single video on the channel, the main part about actually learning to code is being excited about learning to code. And one of the best ways to be excited about coding is actually coding up things that are interesting and exciting. And most people understandably think that in order to code interesting things, you have to be really advanced. But what I wanna show with the series is that that's definitely not the case. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you three Python projects that are number one, very quick to build. Number two, do not require a lot of knowledge beyond the basics of Python. And number three, that are actually interesting and something that you might actually want to use for something. And on top of all that, number four, that are still very instructive and will allow you to learn something interesting and something important about working with Python and about programming in general. So I hope that these three projects will be interesting to you. If they are, as always, I would appreciate a like down below in the description. It helps this video get shown to more people on YouTube so that more people can be introduced into the amazing world of programming. And to show my appreciation, I wanted to share this picture of a very cute kitten for you to enjoy. But now let's move on to some Python right after we first hear a word from our sponsor. So on this channel, we always talk about the importance of having in-demand skills like coding to boost your career. One of the other most important tools that you need in your skill arsenal is the ability to communicate ideas via video. So before we move on, I quickly wanna share an excellent tool for you to do that, the Wondershare Demo Creator. Wondershare Demo Creator allows you to take your idea sharing to the next level. Let me show you. All you have to do is download the app and click record. Then you can easily record your presentation and your screen at the same time. After which we can enter a video editor window where you can add all sorts of cool effects and transitions. In addition, you can also use Demo Creator as a standalone video editor. And they have tons of ready to use templates to get you started with absolutely zero experience. You can create yourself a virtual avatar where Demo Creator uses machine learning to create a virtual character that that tracks your eyes and your movement. And another really important part about video is of course sound. And for that, Demo Creator comes with a built-in SFX library and even a voice changer to give you some motivation. If you download the app today and share a video using the hashtag presentwithdemocreator, you'll have a chance to be one of three winners to receive a premium Demo Creator license or receive a $100 Amazon gift card. So if you want an easy way to start creating engaging videos today, you can check out Demo Creator from the first link in the description. Thank you for Wondershare Demo Creator for sponsoring this video and making these videos possible. So let's get into our first Python project. So if you wanna to learn to code, you're probably someone who's quite motivated and you generally wanna be on top of things. So you probably wanna follow the news, right? But because coding takes so much time, you might not have the time to always open up uh, the five different news sources that you use to get your news and read all the main headlines. So that is why with our first project, we are building a news automator. There is this really cool API called News API. And what I'm talking about is this one right here. You're gonna click on this button here, get API key. Then you're going to go to your code file. At the top, you're going to create a variable like this. We use API underscore key equals, and then you're gonna paste basically the key that you get from your API. I've got my actual API key just above here, but I'm not gonna show it to you because it's private. Then we're gonna start defining some functions. First of all, we want to create this object of query parameters. If you send a network request to this URL right here, it's going to call the API and based on the parameters that you give it, it's going to send you some response. And to show you what that means, is if you go to the documentation of the news API to get top articles to send a request to this URL right here, which we have already defined up here. For example, for country, we can just define it in, the, in our object 
as country, colon, and then there's a list of all options. And then for category, for example, here we can see that the category can be one of either business, entertainment, general, or basically one of these. And then the different ones that you can set, like for example, a keyword to search the news articles for. So once we set the parameters that we actually want, so for this first one, we're just gonna define a function to search news by category. We're gonna define this other function that we're gonna pass these parameters to. And here, the way we actually make a network request to this API using Python is using this requests library. So we go requests.get with the parameters that we just defined and passed to the function. Example response that you're going to get that's going to be sent to your code is going to be something like this. And the way we actually access that with our code is by calling response.json. And then we are essentially going to have this object for us to manipulate. And if you just look at it, we can see that we need to find the articles key, which is then going to give us a list of all the articles with all these fields. And we're going to define an empty array of results and for article in article, so it's going to be a for loop that loops over all, all the articles. We're going to append an object to this results array that has the title, which we're going to get with the title key from the article object and the URL field. And the way I know that this is how it's formatted is again, just by looking at this example response, we can see that for every article object, we have a title, we have an author, we have a source. And then at the end for all of the results, we are going to print a title and the URL as well as a new line and to see how that works. I put this Python script inside of my path in such a way that all I have to do is from my terminal window, I'm gonna just call news and then the name of the category, which is business, for example, and then it's going to print the top business articles from all the news sources for the country that I have chosen, which is the UK. And the way I did this is by going into my finder, going into your root folder, and then to get hidden files to show up, you have to go, I believe it's command, shift, and period, and you should find a file called .z profile if you're on a Mac, and in here, you're gonna define alias, and whatever you want to call the program, you're going to go, for example, news equals Python, and then the path to the actual script. And then what that is going to do is whenever on the terminal window, you type news, it is going to be aliased to this command. So essentially, it's instead of running news, it's going to run whatever you defined here. So Python, and then the script, if that makes sense. And then if we look back at our script, the way I've defined it is that argv1, which you import from sys, argv1 is going to get the first command line argument. You can obviously do whatever you want with this. That's just how I've defined it for myself. And you probably saw that I've defined some other functions as well. For example, I've defined this function that instead of getting articles by category, it gets my query. And again, I just looked at the API documentation, q colon, the query string that we want to search for. And then if we run that function right here, for example, comment these out for a minute, is now going to get me articles from the UK that match the keyword of Liz Truss, who is the current prime minister of the UK, who's doing a very terrible job. These are just some examples of how you might use this particular API. You can define all sorts of functions, for example, to search for articles by country, ton of different things you can do to automate news for you. With that, I think that's pretty cool and something that I actually might see myself using from now on. And with that, let's move on to the next script, which is probably the coolest Python script that I have made so far, honestly. And I'm so excited to share this. What we're talking about here is a eBay price tracker. Essentially, let's say you wanna buy something on eBay. For example, I wanna buy an M1 MacBook Air and I'm just looking to buy one used, right? It can be difficult to tell what is a good price to pay for a used item, because as you can see, there's all sorts of different prices that these M1 Max books are being listed for. And obviously, to actually figure it out, you would need to do something like come here a couple of times, look at all the different prices, and sort of take an average, and then once you see something that's below the average, that's when you know that it's a good deal. But actually doing something like this manually can take a while. So why don't we make a Python script that does it all for you using something called web scraping. A web page like this, it sort of has a couple of different things going on. At the end of the day, a lot of these things that you see over here, like the way they're laid out, the way they look, all these images, all of this is like just styling. But behind the scenes, if you look at the source of a web page, all we really have here in terms of the content, so the content that we actually care about, is a nested list of HTML, 
there are different HTML elements, all with different information in them. We can use Python to essentially load up this information so without the styling because the Python code doesn't care about what the web page looks like and then search for things using these tags that we can see here. And the way we do that is we need to install something called beautiful Zoo. And then you also wanna install and import these other packages just in a moment we'll see what we actually use this for. Then you're going to go on eBay and I'm on the eBay UK side because I'm in the UK but whatever country site you use you're gonna go there you're gonna search for whatever you actually want to track the price of then you're gonna copy the link up here and you're gonna paste it as a link variable right here then we're gonna define a function this is gonna take a link and at the end here we run it with the link that we defined we send a get request to get this page using a Python code. Then in order to actually look at it, we are going to use beautiful soup. So we're gonna go page underscore pass equals beautiful soup with r dot text as a first variable and then HTML parser as the second parameter. And just right here, if you just quickly print this page parser just to see what's actually going on here. When you strip out all the styling, all the JavaScript, all of that, this is actually what this web page is like if you just care about the content like the actual information this is obviously a lot to look at what we instead want to do is go to the actual ebay page and what we're looking for here all of these search items in this ul so unordered list and all of them have this list object that have a class of s dash item so what we can do with beautiful soup is have a variable called search results by going page pass dot find and we're gonna find a UL that has a class of SRP results. And from that UL, we wanna find all items that are inside an LI tag that have a class of S-item. So essentially this is gonna create a list of all of these list items that have all of our search results that we want to look at. Then we're gonna define an empty array of item prices. And for all of these search results, we are going to then find the actual price. And again, we'll just look at the page element in here, we'll go on top of the price and see that it is indeed inside a span that has a class of s-item underscore price. And to actually get this from over here, from all of these, we would look for a span that has a class of s-item underscore price. And to get it as text, we go dot text. And then sometimes in these search results, I actually see, okay, I don't think we have that now, but basically I just found when I was trying this that sometimes we would get like price to some other price. So just to avoid that, we go, if two is in that price text, we just ignore it basically. But if it's not, get the actual price because right now we're just literally gonna get a string with this pound sign. And then if it's more than a thousand, it's gonna have a comment just to make sure that we only get in the number, price as text from item index one to ignore the pound sign and we replace a comma with nothing in case it's more than a thousand and it has a comma. So essentially that just passes it as a number and then we return them. So if we just do that, it's all already going to work. There's a couple of other things I did after this, which, which we can look at. If we just run this right now and we print them, and look, would you look at that? We have a list of the prices of all of the MacBooks in our search result right here, but we're not done yet. Just to remove some outliers, basically, I've created this function here, which is gonna use NumPy to essentially edit our list of prices in such a way that if the price is either two standard deviations below or two standard deviations above the mean of our prices, then we're going to ignore it. And the last thing we are actually doing, first of all, defining a separate function to get the average if you want, and we can even print that here. But to actually make this project as useful as possible, it might be worth actually tracking the price over a couple of different days and then sort of getting the average of those. To do that, we're gonna define this very last function over here, which basically just saves all of these prices in a CSV file with the date. And again, the specifics of this function here don't matter that much. You can literally just copy this, I, I don't care. Basically creates this prices.csv file, which is going to have a field for the date and then the average price. And again, this is literally a program that I probably will be using going forward. So on to the last one. We're gonna be making a Python voice recognition bot. A 
exciting times. And the way we do that, first of all, we need to pip install speech recognition. I've just got this random text file over here. Hello world, this is a test file for my Python script. It'll go test file name equals the file name of the audio file. I think it needs to be in this format or I think MP4 works as well. Then we're going to go R equals SR dot recognizer, which is gonna initialize an instance of a class that can recognize speech. Then we're gonna define this function over here, which is gonna take a file name. And the first one is very easy. All we have to do is with SR dot audio file, taking the file name as source, we go audio underscore data equals R dot record which is going to record the audio from the audio file into this variable. Then we transcribe it into text by going r.recognize underscore Google, which is gonna use like the Google speech recognition API software, something like that, taking in the audio data that we just saved up above and then return the test. So if we print that, would you look at that? If that's magical to you, go hit the like button. To make this even better, we wanna be able to record our voice from our microphone and immediately transcribe it into text. And for this, it's actually slightly more complicated, but not that complicated. Go pip install sound device. We're also going to import these two things right here. And you find this other function. Basically here, you might need to do some tweaking because this is gonna slightly depend on your audio device. Basically, you're gonna define a variable called sample rate, which for most devices, I believe is gonna be 44,100. Duration is gonna tell a program how many seconds to record audio for. Then we go to audio recording equals SD dot rec. Duration times our sample rate. Sample rate equals sample rate. Channels equals for me, it's one, Some for some devices, it's two. Again, I'm not an audio expert. This just sort of depends on your audio device. And then dtype, something called int32. And print recording audio, sd.wait, which is gonna wait for you to record audio. Actually, let me just run this through just to show you actually what it is doing here. It's going to start recording right now. This is now being recorded by my microphone. It's gonna do it for five seconds. Right now, this is now being recorded by my microphone. But to do actually what we want to do, what we then want to do is write this into a text file. And very simply to do that, we just go wav.write. We're gonna define a name for the file that we want to write. And this is one of these other variables that we've got saved up here. We're just gonna say we add recording.wav with the sample rate and audio recordings or the data that we just recorded. This is going to store it into a wav, so a sound file. So not quite what we want here, but essentially once you run this, you're going to get the, this file to pop up right here with the name that you just defined above. And then what we want to do is pass this file in to yet another function. So we're gonna go save text to file and we're gonna take the new file name of the file that we want to save our text to, which again, we're gonna go up here and say the third file name variable. For me, I'm just gonna voice as text.txt and then all we go with open file name and it's important that you choose the parameter of w to tell the program that you're going to be writing to the file rather than just reading it as f or file or whatever f dot write and we write the text that we pass in the function into this file and then at the bottom when we run all of these change together what we are doing. First, we're gonna run the function to recognize voice from a microphone, which is gonna give us this recording sound file over here, or it's gonna overwrite it if you already have it. Then we are going to pass that file into our recognize from file function. That is gonna return that file as text, and we're gonna save that as text from voice. And then we're gonna pass this text from voice into the save text from file function, which is going to save, simply save this text variable as a file with the file name that we defined above. If this chain of events doesn't make sense to you, just pause the video. I promise you this should make sense. And if you run it, we're gonna see some absolute magic. First of all, it's gonna record. This is a recording. Please subscribe to my channel. It's the best YouTube channel ever. Record. This is a recording. Please subscribe to my channel. It's the best YouTube channel. And now, if we open our voices text dot TST, are you ready for this? Boom. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's best. Okay, I messed up the recording a bit, but you get the point. I hope you enjoyed one of these programs. I certainly enjoyed making them. I really wanna make more of these videos. And if you would like me to make even more of these videos, 
the best way for you to indicate to me that you want to see that is by liking the video. Whatever you want to see, just comment it down below. And here is yet another Python automation project idea. With that, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.